and, and I'll just take it up more con contextual towards finance domain and then I will take it up further with the product uh, overview kind of a workshop mode of discussing a lot of use cases out there. All right. So if you have any problems in my audio or if you need any clarification, so probably you can just post just a question or something. But the other aspect is, uh, first, I will complete the overall presentation, the product, uh, I mean, training, uh, workshop mode training to discuss certain use cases and so on. And at the end, I will take it up to Q&A. So I will, I'm open for the uh, Q&A mode where you can post your questions and I'm happy to answer that as well. All right. So thank you so much again. And I'm going to start the presentation. All right. So. I'm going to concentrate on this specific title here, Advanced Finance Analytics. So, uh, I mean, as the title itself explains uh, what we are going to cover, basically, we are going to touch base the advanced concept of analytics and how exactly that works in the finance domain. By the way of introduction, so I guess already Namrata gave a quick introduction, but this is me. I'm one of the product managers in Zoha Analytics. Uh, product and I've been with Zoho probably for past eight plus years and I take it, take care of certain modules and integrations and so on and also I hit certain business development activities. All right so I'm going to start with a general overview of analytics domain altogether. So uh, the analytics domain uh, probably I mean just to throw a question to you to all the audience out there uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure just by reading this title, you might have a lot of uh, designations might have coming in your mind, but I just want to say this. So some of the most in-demand jobs. Tell us, uh, if you don't mind, yes. uh, I'm not able to see the PPT uh, in case you're sharing the PPT. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe. All right. So I guess it's the same problem for all. Let me pass the screen sharing and let me try to share it again. Give me a minute. All right, can you see my screen? Great. No, it's perfect. All right. That's great. Thanks for the confirmation and input. <clears throat> All right. So just to kick start again, uh, a quick topic that I just want to touch base here is one of the most in-demand jobs in the market today as the LinkedIn is, these are all the designations. So data analyst, uh, data scientist, consultants, forecast analyst, even there is a designation called chief data officer. We, we shouldn't or we hadn't noticed these designations just before five years or probably 10 years back. We don't even know these designations basically. So the demand of the analytics in the overall world or in any given business uh, is, can be, is this is the evident or I could say this is the witness that the analytics has been one of the most in-demand technology in the current world. So why we need this analytics? So why exactly people are getting into the analytics tools and how exactly it connects to the finance domain? So first point, why people need analytics is every day business are generating a massive volume of data. So when I say massive volume of data, per minute, the overall world just in the internet, they are generating more than 1.5 billion records so every transaction is n number of records, basically. So if your customer make an invoice, I mean, they make a transaction and they generate the invoice, behind the scenes in the technology level, it might be like 15, 20 different views in analytics altogether. So just imagine the, the massive volume of data generated in online and offline as well. So that's how the world is moving forward. So uh, people say it's more than... 50 zettabyte of data exists in the world currently and everything is generated from online and it forecasted to be 175 zettabyte of data in 2025. 
So this is this particular stat is very interesting because 90 percentage of the data generated or maybe 90 percentage of the data that we have in the world currently is just generated in the last 18 months. So a hefty volume of data is keep on accumulating or adding every day. So that's why the analytics tools are in demand or one of the most uh, in demand technologies in the current world because people need to analyze, right? So that's the first focus. And, and, and this, is, this is something interesting, even you would have noticed it, the analytics is playing a vital role in your day-to-day -day life as well. So when I say the day-to-day -day personal life, if you take your iPhone and you see, you, you get some analytics on how exactly you use your iPhone. Or if you open any uh, service provider's app and see, you, can, you will have some analytics on uh, how exactly the data has been used by you or whatever it is. Maybe it can be anything. In any given mobile app, you will find a dashboard and analytics nowadays. Uh, even that most towards the smart uh, watches as well. So that's the impact of analytics and that's the necessity of analytics in the day-to-day -day world. Now coming to the business aspect, so why uh, or maybe how analytics uh, helps in the business uh, in the current world, the more data that you have, the deep analysis that you can make and you get more insights out of it. So the more granularity of the data. So when I say more granularity of the data, so if you take a, a invoice transaction in an organization, you can just make it as a simple invoice transaction that this is the invoice number, this is the date, and this is the amount or tax and so on. It might be one record or one row, but you will have some subset of data supporting that like line items, uh, quantity, uh, and of course you have the, uh, the unit cost involved in it, and, and what is the actual procurement cost in your inventory, and a lot of connections or uh, connecting dots associated with each and every single record in an organization. And that gives a deep analysis basically, because the more granularity or the more dimension of data that you have, you will have a lot more insights in place. So that's the reason uh, data generated in various aspects nowadays. And similarly, this analytics will help you to isolate the challenges in your business. So let's say when you have a business uh, and when you have more granularity of the data, you'll be able to quickly go ahead and find where exactly the problem resides. Or I could say, you can go to a deep granularity and see where exactly a problem resides in your overall organization, or it might be the transactions or filing or whatever. So that's the power of data basically. And of course, with the help of the data, you can make firm decisions. Uh, I mean, it is, it is always, uh, better to go with data-driven model rather than go with the instinct and prediction in, in most of the cases. Even there is a famous quote called, uh, people say, we believe in God, but every other person has to bring their data, <laughs> right? So, uh, so accept God, you need to believe in the data to make a decision in your life or in your business. So, uh, and, and of course, considering the fourth point, it is more into like the current technology because, uh, with the, with the ingestion of AI, I mean, the artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies, now everybody can go ahead and make the prediction in the business, basically. So with the help of AI and ML, uh, we can predict certain things and act accordingly. So forecasting certain things and, and make a move out of it is very smart way of uh, dealing with the business. So this is how the business helps in the real world. I mean, this is how the data helps uh, uh, in the real world with, with the analytics tools. So that's the quick overview of the necessity or the importance of analytics. Now I'm going to make it more uh, connected or maybe I'm going to just make it more uh, effective towards this uh, topic, how analytics tools can help CA. So of course, this is a simple business scenario where all the business man or the business owners will typically reach CA and they will go ahead and, um, I mean, they will, they will help them to do the, or the audit and taxation and all those stuff. This is the, the typical process that happening all the time. And to do so, typically you take some finance, uh, financial reports basically. So when I say financial reports, it's all about the, the traditional balance sheet, uh, the profit and loss, 
or the income statement of course this this without these views it is impossible to run the a business and take care of the taxation auditing and all those stuff these are all the core report uh, for any given business in terms of finance aspect so this is this is the bread and butter or i could say this is the core line that any uh, uh, ca needs but is it sufficient in the current world in 2021 we are talking about uh, i mean we were talking about a lot of ai and all those stuff in the last i mean probably just before five years all these technologies like ai or something that uh, it, it's supposed to come in future and so on but now everything is here uh, with the current technology that we have do you think these traditional finance uh, reporting itself is enough to run uh, a business i could say definitely no all right so now what your client need your client need 360 degree insights it's not just a statement maybe some small business owners do not understand the 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 balance sheet and the finance reports but behind the scenes uh, i mean we need to go with the process that's how it is working on but when you give more insights to your customers and clients you are not just helping them with the 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 taxation it is more into like you have the option to deliver and consult them and and guide them what they are supposed to do uh, so not just helping them with the the taxation or auditing process but you suggest them how exactly the financial things should take in care and that that can be done with the help of your uh, i mean the analytics tools in the current market all right so that's the quick overview of the necessity of analytics in today's world and also you know that uh, i mean how exactly the analytics topic or software connected uh, in the real world of finance domain so with that uh, i'm i'm going to just uh, stop the presentation and i'll be entering into the the product mode in the product mode i could say i will i will touch base the specific use cases i will showcase the tools how how exactly that should you should use the tools and 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 that will help you to take it up a lot of uh, learning from there uh, and and of course we are going to use the tool uh, for a demonstration purpose and all the stuff is zoha analytics but but uh, the concept i'm going to keep it neutral that if you take any given bi tool so when i say bi tool uh, that this domain is called business intelligence domain so uh, the analytics or bi tool if you take any given bi tool that you take uh i mean what are all the things that you can do how exactly a bi tool works and how advanced it is in the current generation so that's what i'm going to touch base here so uh, i'm going to quickly take a couple of slides to introduce the product that i'm going to showcase here today so that's called zoho analytics so some of you might aware of it zoho is a company which has been in the market over 23 years or 24 years and uh, it's one of the well known company in india nowadays uh, with uh, recently our ceo was awarded uh, with padma shri award and, uh, and and so on so basically zoho is pretty much known topic for many uh, we offer a lot of softwares we we produce more than 120 plus different softwares everything is uh, everything can be used by many business so one among the product that we have is called zoho analytics so this is a bi tool i'm going to talk about and uh, just a 30 seconds introduction to this product the product has been in the market over 10 years of time over a decade of time and we have more than 100 i mean uh, 10000 plus customers 2 million users and we have presence in 150 plus countries so we are pretty much expertized or been uh, experienced in the analytic analytics domain and we handle a lot of integration with various finance applications like sage quickbooks zero and uh, zoho books and everything so so from here i'm going to switch to the product but before that uh i mean i i'm i'm pretty sure most of you may already aware of the purpose of analytics and everything but some of you uh, do not get the concept of the basic uh, need of what is analytics or maybe a basic question of what is analytics altogether people say yes analytics is a dashboard where you can get some insights and all the stuff but is that analytics definitely not the analytics is more than that which is 
it it involves in a stage of a different set of process in a business and that's what we call it as analytics all right and i'm going to quickly guide you how exactly the analytics should be approached from from basic okay so the first stage of analytics domain is raw data so without any data we cannot get any analytics on top of it so the raw data resides anywhere so the raw data might reside in your local computer drive as an excel file or in uh, your client may maintain a database system where they have the raw data all the transaction data and similarly they may have the data stored in cloud storage just like google drive or onedrive or something or they might be using some business applications so when i say business applications it could be tally zoho books zero sage quickbooks whatsoever or maybe any crm system um, any marketing system uh, nowadays they, they they use a lot of social media to prompt the ads and so on so they, they will be using facebook ads google ads bing ads uh, and and so on so the data resides anywhere i could say technically behind the scenes the data resides in any form in any 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 place i could say so that's that's what we mention as raw data so typically if you see from the back end technology the raw data will be stored in form of records you will have multiple records in in a table so it's similar to a excel spreadsheet even in a database uh, just think imagine Uh, an excel spreadsheet is called what we call just as table and you have a lot of records behind the scenes which what we call it as data that data that that's how the data will be stored and that's the raw data now so uh, the second stage in analytics is preparing the data so when i say preparing the data uh, it means this is the most trickiest layer in the analytics domain uh, it's not focused only on the finance domain or any given domain if you take uh, analytics data preparation is the most trickiest part and if you fix this then the analytics is super easy all right so you connect data the data resides in many places you connect the data you bring in the data uh, and then uh, you go to the the data preparation layer and where you prepare the data basically uh, all right so sorry for the interruption just give me a minute i think i get a prompt message uh just give me a quick minute uh i'm getting some prompt that uh is is namrata is available there oh this has been upgraded now uh I don't think so. That there would be a blockage. I think there was some updation which has happened in the meeting. Oh, okay, okay. So, so is it clear? Ahead. Oh, that's great. So, uh, am I audible and uh, is my screen visible for everyone? Yeah, yeah, very much. Very that's much. great. Thank you so much for the confirmation. All right. Okay. So that's the second stage of data preparation, basically. So you connect the data source, you bring in the raw data, and then you need to prepare the data. When I say prepare the data. it comes in lot of different terminologies you need to do some calculations and computations so when i say calculation it might be a simple basic calculation like sales minus cost to get the profit and uh, similarly the profit percentage so these are all the calculations because behind the scenes in the technology the raw data will not processed and stored it is just till the raw data when you connect any application so you need to do these Uh, calculations and then get uh, reports on top of it so uh, that's simple example that's one simple example for the preparation but you will have lot of things to do so when i say preparation you need to do some transformation on the data so the data model that you see may not looks easy or for the analytics purpose you, so you need to transform your data on certain aspect you need to enrich the quality of data because uh, typically these data are entered by human lot of mistakes will be there so if you take a a column or a field like country somebody can uh, type it as ind somebody can type it as india somebody can type it as in so but when you see it as analytics uh, you you want to see it as the total sales or invoice generated in india so uh, system do not understand that so you need to 
cleanse and enrich the quality of the data before getting into the analytics layer. So that's that's one important. So similarly, you need to do a lot of things when it comes to the data preparation layer. All right. So that's the second stage of analytics. Then the third stage is visualization. So once you fix this problem, I could say 60 to 75 percentage of your time will be spent in the uh, first two stage, connecting the data source and preparing the data. So once you do it, then you go to the analytics layer or visualization layer, I could say, where all you need to do is just go ahead and create reports. You can create a bar chart, pie chart, line chart. There are n number of visualizations today in the today's world. You have a lot of visualizations to choose. You can go ahead and pick anything. And, uh, and of course, uh, it's based upon your comfortable and, and there are some general standards, but based on how, prefer, how you prefer to visualize and analyze the data, you can choose different types of reports, uh, bar chart, pie chart, line chart, geo map chart, pivot view, and, and a lot, all right? So that's, that's the third stage. And typically in the business, once you uh, visualize the data, then you need to gain the insights. Uh, you, you do analysis on top of your data. You filter certain things and see the specific details there, or you click on a data point and do some drill down and do some anal analysis on various dimensions uh, and, and so on. So for example, one quick example is if you see a region wise sales, like in India, you have the, uh, the sales from uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, and so on. If you click on uh, Bangalore and you, you can drill down it and see which product is selling more in Bangalore, whereas which product is selling uh, more in Mumbai and so on. So those are all the analysis and interactions that you do with the system. And, that, and that's how you gain the insights. And finally, the business makes the decision. So these five stages are typically the, the analytics process. So bringing in the raw data, processing it, visualizing it, gaining the insights and, and uh, make a decision. This is how a business use analytics. And this is the purpose of analytics in any given business, even in the finance domain. Now, what a software or analytics softwares like Zoho Analytics can do uh, or can do here, uh, it can connect wide range of data source. It will help you to build the reports and dashboards, and it will help you to collaborate with other users. So you can share it with, uh, share the reports and dashboards with different users with some fine grain access control. So this is how uh, any analytics software can test. It is not only Zoho Analytics. If you take uh, uh, tools like Power BI, Tableau, uh, MicroStrategy, ClickSense, SciSense, uh, there are a number of tools out there, but all the BI tools or all the analytics tools in the market, they do these three stages. This is how the basic concepts. All right. So I'm going to touch base some of the in-demand use cases as part of the product demonstration and the overview. Uh, so from here, I will switch to the product. I will stick with the product continuously throughout the session. But from here, we are going to touch base the product completely. All right. And we are going to touch base some of the well-known or in-demand solutions in the finance domain like consolidating multi-org, cash flow forecasting, agent, agent days analysis for the invoices and a lot. And, and, and I'll take it up one by one as we move forward with the product uh, workshop mode or uh, the use case mode, all right? So with that, I'm switching to the different tab and uh, this is the product, uh, Zoho Analytics product I was talking about and I'm, I'm, I'm one of the product managers for this particular product. I'm going to showcase a lot of examples here. I'm going to uh, walk you through how exactly you can approach the analytics from a CA perspective and what are all the things that you should learn as a CA when it comes to the data analytics and technology and what are all the in-demand solutions or use cases that the current world need. All right. So with that, uh, I just need to get a quick confirmation whether uh, the product is visible for all. Uh, can I get a confirmation in chat or somewhere? Yes, Alice. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we have been we are able to see your product. It's workspaces dashboard and recent items, right? Yes, that is correct. So thank you so much. Thanks for the confirmation. All right. So from here, I'm going to take it up to the the product walkthrough and uh, specific use cases. So as I said, just remember the slide. I just want to go back to the slide. I'm going to approach everything in this three stages, uh, connecting data source, what we call it as import in simple term, and uh, create visualizations, what are all the best way to create the visualizations and how you can collaborate with other users, how, how you can define the access control and everything from here, all right? So first one, 
connecting the data sources. So connecting the data sources, of course, as I said before, typically the business store the data in different places. As I said before, it might be the, a simple Excel file in a local drive or in cloud storage, just like Google Drive, or it may be databases that hosted in uh, Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud SQL, and a lot. And uh, so these are all the data sources that what we support. But I mean, uh, once again, I'm going to keep all these demonstrations in a neutral tone that any given analytics tool will do this. Uh, I mean, we'll do the similar job. So this is the basic concept that you need to stick with. So connecting the data source. So in analytics, approaching the analytics, the first step is when you approach your client and you and you and you're going to do some advanced analytics on top of their data, the first thing that the first question or the first thing that you need to figure it out is what is their data source? Where what are all the possible data that they collect? All right. Some may make entries in notebooks. I mean, that's dated nowadays, but um, some may use the Excel uh, still in most of the cases, but some uses uh, finance specific softwares like most of them I know in India, they use Tally. Uh, similarly in US it's QuickBooks and European zone it is Sage or Exact Online. In Australia, it's more often like Zero and My Business Objects and, and so on. So just imagine or just, uh, I mean, just imagine this first slide or first layer of connecting the data source. So you need to ask the question where exactly their data resides and what are all the best possible connected data that you can use for visualization purpose, not just the typical accrual transactions. You need more information than there. So these are all the different data sources. I'm going to quickly walk through that. So the first one, let's keep it simple. You have the option to go ahead and connect uh, from a local computer drive. So you can just pick the local drive here and uh, you can choose a file and the file format can be anything, Excel, CSV, TSV, or I could say the JSON file, XML file. These are all typically you will get it when you export the data from some well-known applications, but most of them use Excel or CSV files, all right? So you choose the application that you prefer to import and I mean, uh, choose the type of file that you want to import and choose the local drive. And, and if you go ahead and choose a file, you can import the data. Now, before that, before proceeding with this process, there is something called workspaces in Zoho Analytics. So when I say workspaces, uh, just imagine, I'm just taking a step back here to explain the workspaces. So workspaces is just imagine it's like a drive in a Windows machine. Okay, you have C drive, D drive and so on. Inside a C drive and D drive, you have a lot of folders. And inside the folders, you have a lot of files. Similarly, in Zoho Analytics, everything will be organized in form of multiple workspaces like projects. And inside a workspace, you can have n number of folders basically like these. And inside the folders, you have files like reports and dashboards in place. So this is how Zoho Analytics will, will take it up. Now, I'm going to quickly show you how to connect the source here. So I just choose the import and I choose the files here. I'm going to name this workspace called demo workspace. Uh, just, just going to stick with the a concept called demo workspace Zoho. And I'm going to choose a sample file, which is available online instead of picking a file from my local drive. And I go next. Now here, we have a sample file which, which contains the sales data. The reason I'm, I'm showing the sales data here is I'm going to keep this concept very basic, which might be helpful for most of the users to understand easily. So I'm not going to do any analytics on top of it. Don't get panicked, but I just want to quickly touch base how exactly you should see and approach the data from a CA perspective. All right, so for that, I'm going to use the sales file. But when it comes to visualization, I'll go more deeper into the finance data. All right. Now, uh, Zoho Analytics tool, once you choose the file and bring here, you will have a sample preview of what exactly the data are, what are all the data that you're trying to import. And you can name this table. So the table is like more or less like a spreadsheet. So I'm going to name it as sales here. Now, further these options, just coming to this data preview in specific, I just want to emphasize a specific point. This is a thumb rule in analytics, okay? You always need to define the right data type 
to create visualizations. I mean, the right visualizations, I could say. So data type is nothing but. So if you see this data, here we have something called date, region, product category, product, customer name, and so on. So Zoha Analytics obviously has the uh, intelligence to automatically identify what data that you're going to import. So it, it detects the data type. It automatically chooses that this is the date data type. But of course, if you want to change any specific data type, you can click on the drop down. You can go ahead and change the data type. But uh, you just need to take a note here is for, for doing a good analytics, always the data type should be correct. If you have a different data type, for example, instead of date data type, if I choose this as a plain text or number or something, then you have a problem with the visualizations. Because let me tell you, if the data type is not detected properly as date, you cannot create a report like monthly sales trend, yearly sales trend, year over year comparison, and, and so on. So you need to stick with the proper data type. That's the very first basic point. So here, Zoho Analytics has the, um, the intelligence to automatically predict the data type that you have. So it's, it's date data type. So similarly, you can just scroll and see if you see the sales here, it's It's just check with the basic uh, concept like sales and so on. Now, um, I'm not going to uh, discuss these points like formatting the data type, I mean, formatting the date column and all those stuff because that's pretty much you can do it on your own. Uh, and also a lot more advanced settings when it comes to CSV files and so on, but let's not touch base that. Uh, it's more technical or I could say, uh, if, you, if you find any difficulty in importing any data set, then you need to touch base this point. Typically, if you have a proper data in a, in a local drive or any, any data source, then you don't need to touch any of these options. Now, I'm going to create this workspace, and that shows the quick, I mean, the quick summary of how many records and uh, columns imported in Zoho Analytics. All right, so this is how your data stored. I'm coming from the home screen again. I have a workspace called Demo Workspace, which, which I just created. And here I just import a, a data set called sales, which is a raw data with the date format and the, all, the, all the columns. Now, the second thumb rule, the first thumb rule is you should always have the right data type. That's the first thumb rule in analytics uh, products. Second thumb rule is you need to understand how exactly this data is structured here. Because let me tell you that. If you, I mean, I know most of you or many of us basically typically use this spreadsheet like Excel or Zoho sheet or something to make entries in random. So you may have entries in this cell and then you may have entries in some other cell and so on. So you have, uh, I could say you typically when we manually type the data, we directly create the report. We do not uh, enter a proper raw data and go and create a visualization like a pivot view we directly go ahead and type the data manually. But here in the analytics tools or BI tools, that's not the case. It's not only, not only in Zoha Analytics, any given BI tool, if you take, the data should be formatted in this model, okay? But uh, just a quick note, I'm, I'm seeing in this direction while I speak because I use multiple monitors. I have the presentation here, all right? So, so the data, this is how the data is supposed to be imported and formatted in Zoha Analytics. Let me, let me describe it in detail. If you see this, there is no row level heading. You have only the column level heading, all right? So we have the column level heading, which is nothing but field, I could say, field in any applications. So if you take tally, uh, you open an invoice module and you choose the invoice date, right? That's, that's the date format or date field. And when, when the data stored in tally behind the scenes or in database or in back in the backend of the application, I could say, the data will be stored in this form like rows. So when you, when you create an invoice, this is how visually your data stored at the backend. You have one row of record. And in that you have the date field, you have some tax information, total amount, uh, whatsoever, address and so on. All right, so this is how the data is stored. Each and every uh, transaction is a record here, okay? 
and you will have the appropriate field name as a column header. So this is how you should show the data and the analytics tools. That's the second thumb rule. Okay. Now on top of it, it is pretty easy that you can go ahead and create the reports, whatever that you're looking for. If you have this in a very proper model, then let's say I just want to see the monthly sales. I can go ahead and drag and drop the uh, field. I can drag and drop the uh, sales and I can just view the monthly sales trend. So if you, I mean, I'm, I'm going to touch base this visualization concept in deep, but coming to the sales module in specific, I mean, the, the table in specific, if you have the data properly aligned in this model, it's pretty simple for you to go ahead and create the visualization like this. Even now the technology has been very, uh, very extensive that you can just ask, show me the monthly sales trend and the reports can be generated automatically like this. So the technology is more advanced. I'll come to all these uh, concepts. This is called the natural language processing technology. This is one of the artificial intelligence in our product. But coming back to the first layer again, data, this is how the data stored. Now, I'm just going to put you, put you a quick question or I could say a quick use case here. What if my data is not properly recognized with the data type? So imagine instead of date, I just have it as a plain text. So when I just have it as a plain text, something like this, I'm just changing it as a plain text. Now, now the reason I was asking you to take care of the data type properly is when you change it as a plain text, then the problem is when you have the date in the chart, the report that you get is not correct. You can see that it is not in a chronological order. It can be in an alphabetical order or something. So always you need to ensure that the data type is proper in any given data set. So this is how your data will be stored in any given business application. So I'm just going to quickly change back to the date data type. Uh, sorry about that. It's going to be just going to make me strict with what data type what I was having. So it's year and month. Date. All right. So this is how your data should be stored in any given analytics tool. Now, I'll come to the second stage, basically in terms of uh, preparing a data, which is very complex, or I could say, which is the trickiest or challenging part of analytics layer. But before that, I just showcased you how to connect a data from a local drive. I'm going to quickly touch base the other data sources, probably you can see it in today's world, okay? So in finance domain, as I said, typically your customers or your client may be using the tools like uh, Zoho Books, uh, QuickBooks, Zero, uh, or, or I could say Sage and so on. So a lot of business applications are listed here. The finance based business application or bookkeeping tools are listed here one by one. So I'll, I'll just guide you how to connect these bookkeeping applications, but the concept would be same in any given tools. All right, that's, that's the second point. And in some cases, the customers may have their own ERP systems and, and they may have databases behind the scenes. So if a customer have a database, I'm pretty sure they technically have some IT team to deal with it. So it's not, I mean, you don't want to worry about that much, but I just want to let you know that in the modern analytics tool, it's even so simple. You can go ahead and also connect the databases. You don't need any technical knowledge. You can easily connect, it to connect the databases also from any given analytics tool. That's how it is works. And in Zoho Analytics, we made it more simpler. So that's how it works. So if you see here, I can go ahead and connect a lot of cloud databases that hosted in Amazon or something. And also we can connect a lot of local databases uh, like MySQL, Oracle database, Postgres database, and so on, SAP, SAP HANA. This is widely used in ERP segment, right? So this, these are all the possible ways, but let me quickly show you how to connect a, a finance application. So the concept is same for QuickBooks, Zero, Sage, or, or anything. Currently, we do not connect, uh, we do not have integration with Tally in Zoho Analytics. Uh, that's something we are checking the possibilities to handle it in future, but because Tally does not 
play much in the cloud base but i'm going to showcase everything uh, in and around zoho books for the time being because uh, zoho books zoho books is one of the cloud based application that we offer in the zoho suite for the bookkeeping and most of you are aware of it uh, so i'm just going to showcase you how to connect the zoho books but just want to let you know that the concept will be same for any given finance application so for zoho books i just choose the zoho book style and i click on next and i have all these modules coming in so you could see here we have two different sections one is called modules the other one is called field so let's go to the invoice module here okay so we have a lot of modules out there so for example let's say uh, let's say you have expense module or invoice module or something now when you choose a module you will be able to see some set of fields or i mean the fields as a part of it so for example if i go to the bills module and the bills module the bill date bill due date and description and the discount amount or whatever that you have the gst information all those information are available in form of fields and you have the modules in place here all right so this is how you need to choose and bring the data so whenever you want to connect any analytics tools all you need to do is just choose import choose that application it may be zoho finance or zoho books or any application choose that and come here and you can go ahead and choose the modules and fields that you prefer to do for i mean prefer to use it for analytics so this is very important stage because without bringing in the data you cannot do any, any analytics and analytics tools because imagine a bookkeeping tool is different analytics tool is different so you need to bring the data between these two tools to do the analytics that's the case always so choose the modules and choose the fields that's very important and and in all the uh, analytics tools typically you can go ahead and uh, choose how frequently that you want to import the data because how frequently that you want to synchronize the data between these two applications uh, every day or every 3 hours or something so in in some cases it may be more real time whenever you make the changes in the bookkeeping tool it will be updated in the analytics tools as well so it may be more real time in some cases but in most of the cases uh, you can do it on a scheduled basis because in in certain cases you are not going to see reports on a real time uh, you just want to see it at the end of the day or once in a month or once in a week or something like that so that's uh, that's how you need to choose the scheduler and uh, and that's it if you click on create a workspace will be created automatically where you have all the data comes in all right so that's how an integration with the business apps works the same process for quickbooks the same process for zero uh, or stay sage or any given tool basically so for analytics purpose you need to visualize that behind the scenes all the modules are stored in form of tables all the fields are stored in form of columns you need to visualize that while you getting into the analytics mode at any given point all right so that's how you connect the business applications if you want me to make it more deep i can make it more deep like connecting the databases also but typically my suggestion is uh, in the finance domain you don't connect databases until unless you deal with a customer who use erp systems it might be sap or it might be oracle netsuite or or any of the erp application then then you have the option to go ahead and i mean it's pretty simple is same as what you see it in the business application all you need to do is cloud databases so in the cloud databases nowadays the data hosted in uh, some uh, tools like am i mean this hosting service provider like amazon redshift amazon rds google bigquery google cloud sql snowflake is one of the widely used uh, databases nowadays and and so on so we have we have the option to directly connect all these cloud services or on other cloud services as well so here it's pretty straight forward you need to handle certain certain authentication information what endpoint or url that you use it in the cloud database what port number what username password and the database name but this is typically taken care by the it team uh, if you need this information no worries if you ask your client they will have that information you just need to invoke that information and connect the database that's it. all right um, and and also here you just need to notice an interesting feature something called live connect okay you're not just connecting the databases and importing the data into analytics tool on a scheduled basis even you can make something called live connect so when i say live connect 
the data will be reside as it is in the cloud source or cloud services. Only the analytics like reports and dashboards are served from Zoho Analytics. Uh, this might be common for some other tools also, but this is how the live connection works with the databases. Uh, it might be differs in some business applications as well. So business applications also does the live connect. So these are all the possible way that you can connect the data source. And uh, the first question that you need to ask to your client is what data source that they use, where exactly their data reside and what possible data, what granular of data that they have for better insights. So if you have that information, use these simple options within very few clicks, you can connect all these data sources in Zoho Analytics or this is mostly common in most of the business applications. So in Zoho Analytics, we support more than 250 plus different data sources. Uh, most of them are compact or maybe listed inside, but here you could see that not just finance domain, it might be sales domain, project management domain, marketing domain, social media, HR management, uh, ERP systems, uh, e-commerce tools like Shopify, WooCommerce and a lot. So we connect a lot of applications, but Coming to Zoho ecosystem in specific, uh, within Zoho, we connect around 15 plus different applications. And that includes a uh, well-known tool in the finance domain is Zoho Books, Zoho Invoice, Zoho Expense, Zoho Inventory, Zoho Subscription. So these are all widely used tools uh, within the Zoho Books eco bookkeeping ecosystem uh, as kind of an ERP. So you can use all these uh, sources to do the analysis. So th that's how you connect the data source. That's the first place. That's the first point. So we solve the first stage problem, connecting the data source. So for the interest of time, I have all these connections established. I have a lot of data imported. Everything is sample data. It's not the real time business data. It's a sample data generated here. Okay. And that's where uh, I have a workspace called Zoho Finance Advanced Analytics Workspace. Now here, uh, I just click on data. Imagine we were just connecting the sales data, which is one simple file. But if you connect a bookkeeping application, this is how your data stored. Just look at the modules that you have. All right, so it's, I could say it's more than 100 plus different modules behind the scenes in any bookkeeping and uh, the tools or applications that play uh, within the same ambit or work closely with the bookkeeping. So bookkeeping, invoicing tools, a subscription management tool to manage the recurring subscriptions for many business. Uh, inventory management tool is widely used and expense management tool is also widely used. So that's how you use it. And, and here uh, for the demonstration purpose, I have already connected these application and uh, you could see all the data comes in different form in different tables. All right. So uh, to explain it in the finance context in terms of same data model, data storage and everything here, I have a table called accounts, which, which is basically the chart of accounts that you have. So all the account names and then the description that you maintain in Zoho Books application or any given bookkeeping application, the type of account that you have and uh, the currency code that you use and, and all those information. So once again, you see here, everything is a transaction. Everything is a record. This is one account type and this is the next account type and so on. So that's how the accounts module will be stored the data behind the scenes. Now, the closely working module with accounts module is accrual transaction. So any given transaction that happened in your finance system will be imported here and stored in this form of records, the rows, these in every column, uh, the appropriate column names or the field name that you have, and you will have a lot of records in place. Now, just a quick tips I could give you just ignore these ID fields. It's not logical or not readable for most of you because this, this will help you to connect the modules. So it will help you to look up between the modules. That's why you have the ID columns. That's the proper way of connecting any given two data set in any given business. So, um, I mean, if you just ignore the ID tools, you can see the different data types that we have here, uh, the different columns or different fields that you have here. Okay. So similarly, uh, I mean, you have, I mean, all the data set available. Now, these two are closely working modules, right? The accounts and accrual transaction. So for each and every account, what are all the transaction that happen uh, is available here. Now, these two data set are supposed to be connected. 
and in certain cases you need to create some formula and do some cleansing and all those stuff which i will take it up one by one now that's the second stage and that's where you spend a lot of time with the analytics tool all right so after connecting the data bringing in the data and preparing the data is one of the most widely used uh, layer or extensively used layer where you need to spend a lot of time okay but just want to let you know that you should learn this stage very well to for easy visualization but with the current technology with the latest tools that we have in uh, in the market like zoho analytics most of these process are automated or i could say these products has the intelligence where it can do the connection automatically between the modules and then it will provide the insights on top of it so uh, zoho analytics is one example which i will quickly show you here just imagine if i connect a bookkeeping tool with all the other tools like expense and all the stuff what zoho analytics does is it can automatically bring in the data on a schedule basis it can automatically update the data in zoho analytics tables based on the schedule that you have and it will maintain the joins between the tables the relationship between the tables so here i'll show you a quick model diagram so a model diagram okay maybe this is very complex the accounts module is connected with a lot of other modules so let's keep it simple let's go to the accrual transaction now if you see this accrual transaction i'll go to the model diagram you can see this accrual transaction is already connected with many modules here so for tools like zoho analytics what we do when we connect zoho books or sage or quickbooks or any given finance application bookkeeping tool we automatically understand the relationship between the data and the source and we connect it automatically so we model it for you okay so it it avoids uh, i mean it saves a lot of time it avoid a lot of effort for you by understanding the logical data modeling behind the scenes now this looks simple for this is only the modules associated with the accrual transaction modules but when we have a very extensive set of tables and a lot of um, columns and all the stuff in place or maybe i could say when we when we have hundreds of tables in place then the data model will be very complex i could say or or i could say it's super uh, extensive it's very quite tricky to understand the complete data model and the one example which i was showing here is here it is this is one of just imagine behind the scenes all these modules are connected like this so we take that effort we do it on our own for most of the business application so all these modules are modeled like this so we have n number of modules here to showcase but i'm trying to keep it simple uh, where you have whole lot of modules to understand how exactly a module is connected with each other like this all right so that's the data modeling uh, for business application connections for cloud databases or for all the business applications you don't need to do it uh, tools like zoho analytics can automatically handle it but when you connect a file from a local drive or when you import the data from cloud databases and so on you need to take care of this data modeling also based on the client requirement when it comes to analytics so data modeling is nothing but connecting to modules or tables that's it it's a simple lookup feature but it can be as complex as what i have shown to you okay so um, a quick tips on it so whenever you have two data set comes in let's assume that you have a bookkeeping tool like it like this where you maintain your budget in a local drive in an uh, in an excel sheet when you bring in that budget into zoho analytics i mean within the same workspace you can connect some other source also you can bring in that data also inside zoho analytics and you can blend it or connect it along with your bookkeeping too okay so in that case what i mean whenever it comes to the the relationship between the data set the lookup relationship between the data set you need to follow a couple of steps okay the first step is let's assume let's see this let's take the same module as an example we have accounts we have accrual transactions now these two module we have 
how these two modules can connect with each other the first point is these two modules should have a common column so let's say you have some column here which which supposed to be available in other other module also and here that's account id so you have account id in accounts module and also you have the account id in the accrual transaction module now uh, you just need to simply right click on it go ahead and change to lookup column and choose the other column available in the other table like uh, i mean the account id column in the accounts table or something and you just need to choose that column and click on okay a, a lookup relationship will be created automatically it's as simple as that so if your client ask you to do some analysis with their custom data set or like as i said before the example might be like budget versus the bookkeeping tool uh, connection or something all you need to do is just ensure that you have all the data in one place in zoha analytics and all you need to do is just go ahead and identify the column which connects these modules and right click on it mark it as change to lookup column that's it the these two columns will be connected with each other so that when you're trying to create a report on top of it you have the option to use a field from one module and another field from another module so for example here i'm i'm going to create a quick report a pivot view that shows me account wise transaction amount so the account wise is basically i have the account name in the account module and the transaction amount i have it here in the accrual transaction module so all i need to do is take a field from account module and then i just need to pick the other field which is from the accrual transaction so just let me search it as we have a lot of modules here so so i'm just going to take the transaction amount and i place it and i click on generate and that's it you have the account wise transaction uh, amount from the accrual table so just you just need to notice this very clearly that we have we are taking fields from two different modules to create a report so you need to understand or maybe uh, virtually you need to imagine how exactly the data stored and how these modules are supposed to be connected so i'm i'm just showcasing this as an example for a custom data set that you bring in but please note that for bookkeeping tools like zoho books or any given bookkeeping tool and analytics tool like zoho analytics it can automatically take care of the relationship between the data set for reporting purpose all right so that's that saves a lot of time for you that's one aspect all right so this is one layer in the second stage this is the first topic connecting two different data sources is the first con i mean two different data set is the first topic but nowadays your clients and customers are prefer to connect data from different data sources not just within the finance ecosystem they also prefer to connect data with a sales system like a crp app i mean the crm application or a erp application or it might be marketing application project management application and so on your your customers are typically preferred to connect data from two different sources and and you know what uh, we did uh, some analysis in terms of adoption in from 2020 i mean 2019 to 2020 and around 40 percentage of our customer base we have more than 2 million users are using our application around 40 percentage of our customers are connecting more than three different data sources so when i say three different data source it might be their sales application it might be their finance application might be their marketing application they are connecting all together in one place they are trying to understand the model or relationship between these two sources not just these two models or modules it's between two different sources on top of it they can go ahead and build the reports and dashboards so imagine the power of it and and i just want to let you know that in tools like zoho analytics we even take care of that process okay meaning for some of the known data set like zoho crm and zoho books or it may be salesforce and uh, some other application as long as our system is able to understand the relationship between two data set we automatically blend the data from two different data set and have it ready for you for the visualization 
once again, that's going to save a lot of time for your customers and for you in case if you want to refer something from some other data source. All right, that's, that's the second point. Now coming to the third point, uh, in tools like Zoho Analytics, I mean, this is, this is our unique selling point compared to other BI tools in the market because we automatically pre-built a lot of reports. So when I say pre-built, as soon as you connect the Zoho books or as soon as you connect the Sage or everything, we create hundreds of reports automatically, typically that you use it in your finance domain. So we automatically create all those reports for you. And all you need to do is just go ahead and utilize the report and modify it if you need. And of course, you have the privilege or the, the, the space to go ahead and build your own custom reports at any point of time. But in tools like Zohan Analytics, I mean, this is our unique advantage. We create a lot of reports on any given data set by default with our intelligence. All right. So for example, you have a report like cash flow monthly trend and you have this report automatically created. So when you connect the system, this report is ready to use actually. So that's how most of the modern BI tools are doing, but they are not very extensive in terms of providing uh, default reports, but Zoho Analytics does that. Now, coming back to the BI concept in specific again, I mean, just to touch base one more point here, not just reports, we also create a lot of uh, dashboards so at the end of the day after creating multiple reports you put together everything in form of a dashboard something like this where you have all the reports in one place with some kpi indicators and so on so you have all the information here so if you see this one specific report where you have uh, i mean like the month wise all the information that you're looking for in one place similarly you have all these reports in place um, n number of default reports are created. So we create more than 18 plus dashboards in Zoho Books connection itself. And you have a lot of pre-builds out there. So that's one aspect, but you cannot expect the same in most of our business app, uh, intelligence application. So it's, it's unique in Zoho Analytics, but coming back to the analytics perspective, forget about the pre-built reports, we offer it, it's an advantage for you, but what if you don't have that report, then you need to go ahead and create it manually because every business has their unique touch point. They, they want to customize the things on their own. They want to create a view that, that's more personalized for them rather than the generic tool. So in that case, you, you should know how to create or how to approach uh, the data to build a visualization out of it. All right. So that's very important again. Now, <clears throat> now after the pre-built reports, in same stage, data preparation layer itself, we need to touch base few more points, uh, which, which is once again, widely used in the finance domain, because uh, when you face your customer, these questions will often come. So you should learn that as well before entering into the visualization layer. So as I said before, this layer looks complex or a bit tricky, but this is where you spend most of your time. And if you fix this layer clearly, then the next stage is very easy. It's all just click. Uh, generate or just ask the questions and so on. That's how it's going to work. All right. Now, when it comes to the data preparation layer, I'm coming back to the concept lookup where we connect two data set or two data source and have a very, uh, a very deep data model for report building. That's one. The second one is you need to prepare your data. So when I say prepare your data, you need to do some calculations and computations to get some insights out of it. Okay. So for example, let's go ahead and choose the invoice module. So invoice module is, is of course, the, the core module that you use in any bookkeeping tool or finance domain, right? Now coming to this invoicing tool, now all you need to do is, once you connect any business applications, any bookkeeping applications, the data will flow in where you have uh, the ID field, the date, invoice date, status of the invoice and everything which, which are all the fields in your source. But let's take a use case. Uh, this is one of the use case that we have mentioned, which is age in day analysis, or uh, I mean the age wise grouping of invoices that will help you to figure out uh, how exactly the open invoices age are. So when I say invoice age, it's nothing but from the date of generating the invoice, 
how many days it took to close the invoice or maybe uh, how many days that we have gone through and we are going to bucket it or group it like zero to 30 days, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, 90 to 180, because typically business will have 90 days at the max of uh, the closure date for the invoice, due date for the invoice. But uh, I mean, as a business owner or as a CA, if you, if you just see and you suggest or consult your customers in terms of finance aspect, uh, and, and a customer say our sales team is performing very well. They are, they are doing all, they are processing many invoices per month, but I'm not getting the revenue. You need to go ahead and check where exactly you have the open invoices more, in which age group you have more invoices open, and you need to sort it out. You need, I mean, your sales team should chase that customer. Your, your uh, AR team should chase those customers to get the invoices back. So you need to think that way. Now, to do that, here in the analytics layer to, to identify that visualization, to bring out that visualization, you need to do some, uh, you need to use some formulas and calculations to do some preparation here, okay? I'm going to touch base these two columns. I'm talking about these two columns. First, we need to bring in age and days column. And then second, we need to take the age tier column. So these two column or something that what we need uh, in this case. Now the end report that I have or that I, that I just want to create here is uh, the open invoices by age tier. So this is the end report I want to create. So end report is nothing but I know I know a lot of invoices are generated. How many invoices are open with one to 30 days? I mean, zero to 30 days range. So when I say zero to 30 days, uh, the invoices are generated in the last 30 days. So it's very well in, uh, in the payment time. So customer has the privilege or the vendors has the privilege to make a payment within that day, okay? And you need to see how many invoices resides between 31 to 60 days. And similarly, this, this is absolutely customizable. It is not necessary that you need to follow this range alone. It can be any range, okay? But to bring this report, you need to do some changes or some, some level of computations in your invoice data to get that, okay? This is one of the widely used report uh, in finance domain. So first you need to calculate something called age in days. So age in days is nothing but, let me quickly tell you that, from the invoice date till current date, what is the age, okay? Now we have another condition also, if the invoice is closed, then we need to take the closing date. If the invoice is open, then we need to take the current date. All right, so before creating this, all we need to do is just click on add, go ahead and choose formula column. Uh, once again, let me point it out clearly. In Zoha Analytics, this is the usability, but if you take any given analytics tool, this, this is how you need to deal with it. You need to add formulas, you need to use the, the calculation engine or formula engine to solve this. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just clicking add here and I click on, I mean, I'm just going to choose the formula. So in analytics domain, this is another important point. Whenever it comes to the formula, there are two types of formula in place, okay? One is called formula column. The other one is called the aggregate formula. So when I say formula column and aggregate formula, uh, it might sound different or difficult, but let me, let me make it as a simple statement. Formula column is nothing but having some transaction or making some calculation in a row level. So I just selected a row. In a row level, you make the changes, all right? Whereas aggregate formula is nothing but you perform some operation in a column level, all right? So you perform some mathematical operation like sum, minimum, maximum, count, average, uh, whatsoever. So it's basically the column level functionality is what we call it as aggregate formulas or aggregates in analytics domain. Whereas the row level operation will be formula column, or uh, I could say the, uh, you can keep it in simple term, like some computations in the row level. This is how you need to do. Now, in this case, uh, obviously we need to go ahead and pick the formula column that will help us to calculate the day difference, the number of days that we have between the due date and the invoice date. All right, so this is the difference between the due date and the invoice date. We need to take it as a formula here. So all we need to do is just go ahead and click on add and select add formula column. Now, 
This is the formula editor where you go and go ahead and add the formulas. At the right, you have a lot of functions predefined. Okay. This sounds technical, but when you hover the mouse point, you have a clear example of how exactly those functions works. All right. So this is this is extensive. We cannot teach you, or nobody can teach you that uh, this is how you should write a formula or something. It's it's open wide based on the requirement. It could be any given solution. Okay. But here for this particular use case. We need to use the combination of functions and the columns. Typically, you use functions, you use it the appropriate column so that it's dynamic. So once you create a formula, whenever you open the report, the report should be automatically updated. It's, it's not a manual process, it's a one-time process, right? So this is how the formula editor look, where you need to use the columns that you prefer to use. Uh, so we here we need to use two columns to be involved. One is invoice date. Uh, and of course, we have another column called due date, or we need to take the current date. Okay, that's one aspect. And we need to use the function. Okay, so that function will help us to dynamically calculate the difference between invoice date and the current date, or invoice date and the closed date difference. Okay, now I'm not going to write a formula, I'm going to show the formula which is already created, and I'll explain that makes you to understand easily here. Now, this is the formula will help you to calculate the age in days. So let me tell you how exactly this works. This is a function, a date, diff, it's called a function that will help you to calculate the difference between two dates, the number of days that resides between the two dates. All right. And we need to use a field called invoice date because the invoice date where you capture all the date information, right? And you have to use something called function called now. Now is nothing but current date will be taken. Okay. It's dynamic. If you use this formula, irrespective of the number of invoices that you have, whenever you're going to see the report, it'll be updated and show you the latest report. That's it. So you need to use functions. You need to use the columns to create the formulas. This is how it works. So here, what we are using is date diff between current date and the invoice date. So that's this will help you to take the difference and this is current date and this is the invoice date that's it so let's take a difference here okay so this is the age in days formula so this will help us to get the result something like this the number of uh, age and days between two different uh, dates like invoices and current date and so on you have all the entries available here as the result which is nothing but this is the number of days now on top of it, you have something called HDR. HDR is nothing but another formula that will help you to create the buckets or I could say the groupings. So I click on edit formula here and show you how exactly this HDR is calculated. Now we are using a function called if. So with the if function, we are taking whether if the age in days is greater than or equal to zero, and if the age in days is below certain value, then it's one to 30. And similarly, when you have this something different like this, I think the calculation is slightly different here, but uh, I just want to let you know, I mean, just concentrate on the core concept here. You take a column, you apply a function or make a comparison like greater than, smaller, less than, and so on, and define another range and make it as a basket, all right? So it's, it's, it's slightly impossible to just teach how exactly to write a formula here uh, because uh, you need to understand uh, the syntax that you want to use it. So when I say syntax, you need to use the if condition and you need to compare it between two different fields and so on. So for example, here, when I take it if condition, so I insert a condition function called if, and I go ahead and say, uh, if let's, let's assume that if the, the age, uh, sorry, the age in days is, if the age in days is greater than equal to zero and age in days less than equal to 30, then write it as one to 30 days. All right, so this is, I mean, I'm just making it simple for your understanding. This is a function with if condition then I make a comparison that if it is greater than zero age and days, and if the age and days is less than 30, I mean, uh, then we need to have the result as one is one, I mean, put in one to 30. 
So this is one example. The formula can be more extensive. I mean, based on your use case, your formula can be anything. Okay, so it's it's open wide. It depends upon the requirement. The formulas will be created appropriately. So you have agent days. You have a lot of. You could see that here. There is something called aggregate formula, which, as I said before, the column level calculation. And you could see a lot of I mean, a lot of formulas calculated here. Year to invoice. So uh, number of invoices that created in this year month to uh, date invoice or year to date invoice value month to date invoice value uh, lifetime of a customer uh, average revenue per user so these are all uh, different formulas that we can use basically okay will help us to create some visualizations and you know what in zoho analytics we do this automatically so by default when you connect any source like business applications like zoho books zero sage or anything we create all the formula for you and on top of it we create all the reports as well so that's our unique feature but but just want to let you know that if you are dealing with any custom data set or if you're dealing with different data source or different bi application you need to go through this formula i mean you need to understand the concept of why we need to create a formula because with the calculated field you need to use it in the reports and dashboard this is how it works that's the second stage all right it can be more deeper that there are certain use cases you may need to consolidate two different data sources when it comes to the multi org consolidation you will be consolidating two different data sources together in one place all right and that's that's where you need to go ahead and use it so it's it's pretty open this is how the data preparation layer looks like this is how you need to work on it okay uh, so uh, lot of use cases in and around associated with it i'll just I'll, I'll try to touch base all those use cases one by one as we move forward uh, and and this is how it works all right that's the second stage okay uh, i'm not getting into more deep because considering the time or, or in, the, in the interest of time it's it's pretty impossible to touch base the complete deep concept of data preparation merging consolidation and all together but i hope you all got a basic idea of how exactly data comes in and how exactly you need to deal with the data and i just want to let you know that again till here you will spend 60 to 70% of your time in analytics domain you're not going to spend time in creating the reports you're not going to spend time in creating dashboards sharing providing access those are those things can be done in probably in 10 15 minutes at any given case so these two are the two different uh, core modules or very a very important layer where you do things on your own all right so that's that's one aspect uh, but of course uh, just talking about the, the modern bi tools in specific most of the things are augmented nowadays it uses the ai technologies it automatically do a lot of things on its own rather than making you to prepare the data so that's what even in zoho analytics we create the formulas we create the common data models even between different data sources like sales and finance and build the reports but just want to give you another information here in the analytics domain uh, if you take some other analytics tools there is a another there is another product called data preparation product itself it will help you only to prepare the data and then push it into uh, visualization tools like analytics okay even in zoho uh, i mean we are working on a new tool called data prep which is which help you to do some lot of ai driven data preparation instead of you go ahead and write these formulas to deduplicate the data transform the data just by selecting certain things it automatically transform it so those things are happening nowadays and uh, down the line you will see that from zoho as well but uh, this is how the overall uh, analytics market is moving on when it comes to the data preparation and data connection layer all right so from here it's pretty simple to move forward with the visualization layer where you can go ahead and create the reports and dashboards very easily so that's where i prefer to uh, spend a lot of time on in these two layers and i'm going to quickly go through the visualizations layer one by one okay so let's assume we have uh, the modules and we have all the data all the formula ready everything ready now to create the visualization it's super simple process all you need to do is just click on create at the top and choose the type of visualization that you're looking for okay so here when i say visualization many of you might confuse uh, that 
bar chart is a visualization pie chart is a visualization how i need to go ahead and choose that specific chart that's the second layer chart is one type of visualization inside it you have many different categories or different types i could say behind i mean so uh, on a high level uh, the visualizations are categorized here in terms of chart pivot summary view tableau view and so on these two are not uh, extensively used like summary view and tableau view but pivot view and chart are widely used in any given industry so let me go ahead and choose the new chart here so to build a visualization you need to imagine where you prefer to see uh, a specific field and where you want to have the other combination field as well so for example here i just want to uh, let you know that like you have something called x axis you have something called y axis and when you see when you click on invoice date for example i'm just trying to create a, a report that will help me to show the total invoice amount i have uh, for every month so i drag and drop the invoice amount field into the x axis because in the x axis i prefer to see the uh, invoice date and in the y axis i prefer to see the currency which is nothing but the invoice amount okay so all i need to do is drag and drop the invoice date into the x axis now i have the option to choose different range it can be the month and year week and year quarterly uh, invoice or date wise or something or even it could be seasonal like let's say january for between two different years february for two different years and so on so you need to choose the range and then uh, decide what you need to put it in the y axis so here i prefer to use the total bcy which is nothing but the invoice amount total base currency uh, so i just click on generate you could see that the invoice is the, the chart is generated from 2019 to 2020 and 2021 now i just want to make it in month wise i just change it to the month wise and all you see it the month wise chart okay so it's a matter of uh, clicks all you need to do is just choose what range that you want it's pretty much self service you can do it do the things on your own once you have the data ready all right so this is how you create a report now this is how the invoicing monthly invoicing trend <clears throat> all right and uh, as i said before you can change the visualization type using the toolbar menu option this might be different for each and every chart but all you need to do is just use this layer and change the different types of visualization that you prefer to use uh it might be the bubble chart it might be uh i mean it might be anything it might be the area chart or, or and, and so on so you can change the visualizations in zoho analytics we support more than uh, 50 plus different visualizations but uh, as a matter of fact in zoho in any given bi tool you can use it but coming to the specific layer uh, here choosing the right visualization so that's where a lot of uh, people can uh, uh, i mean uh, people can get confused in terms of what visualization i'm supposed to choose uh, my suggestion is you can leave it in your own way meaning you can go ahead and uh, choose any of the particular uh, visualization based on the comfortability and the readability that you have okay but in general standards if you deal with volume based analysis it go for the bar chart if you if you want to do a a distribution analysis it's a pie chart uh, a geographical analysis then it's a map chart and so on uh, if you want to see some conversion and flow you need to go with the funnel chart and so on that's the general industry standard but but it's we will leave it up to you to choose what way you want that's one aspect okay now the same report if we want to add another dimension on top of it let's say the invoice status i i will put it in the color shelf color shelf will uh, kind of like another dimension where you prefer to see how exactly uh, the the stage of different invoices in different months so you could see here uh, most of the invoices are closed Uh, so i'm just switching to the view mode so this is how you need to switch between the designer mode and the view mode i'm go going to the view mode where i just ignore this closed invoice and now you see the different invoice stage in different month basically so you see a lot of let's say i just remove all the stuff and i see how many overdue invoices i have in my business and you see that in jan i have a lot of overdue business i need to concentrate on this so this these are all the interactions and this is how you need to analyze your data so once you create a report use those interaction capabilities like this and then you can go ahead and interact with the data set like this
So this is just a filtering aspect. So here you could see the overdue invoices per month. And if you, if you place the mouse pointer, you get a set of information and that's called tooltip. You can have any information in the tooltip. So I'm going to the designer mode. What I mean, let's say I just want to see the subtotal here. I can add it in this uh, tooltip. Uh, let's say I just want to take it as uh, average discount amount. I can have it as average discount in the tooltip and so on. So I have a lot of information out there. And once again, using this, using this drop down, you can choose different functions and sub functions like sum of running total, minimum, maximum, average, count, and a lot. You have a lot of extensive option to do it in the uh, visualization itself. And you can use that combination to build the report. That's how you build the report, all right? Now, I have this report and I have this, uh, state, I mean, the status-wise invoice uh, across different months. Let me focus on this overdue invoice alone. So now in the overdue invoice, if I click on the data point, I can view the underlying data behind it. So all I need to do is just click on the data point here and I, get, and I can go ahead and choose the view underlying data behind it, okay? And I can see the every transaction, I can filter it and so on. Similarly, you can do some more analysis. You can click on it and go for drill down and see what is the week wise uh, instead of month, uh, the month wise, I can see the week wise overdue invoice. I, I can see that in the week two, we have a lot of overdue invoices. So even from here, I just go ahead and drill down on some other aspect. Let's say some other aspect is, I'm, I'm just trying to see uh, who generated or which owner generated uh, more overdue invoices. It might be the salesperson mistake. They might have done a uh, uh, I could say the in, in I mean they might have they might have not followed the process that you have defined and that's why a lot of customers are bringing a lot of overdue invoices it might be the fake sale or closure is not correct or something so I mean I have the data unknown with sample data here but but just you need to understand that we are going in a different granular aspect from all data set we move to giant specific and overdue data specific from there, we are going to the weekly analysis. And from the weekly analysis, even I'm, I'm dynamically moving towards which invoice owner is generating all those overdue invoices. So it's it's pretty open and dynamic, right? This is how you build the visualization. And similarly, you can also create the pivot view, the same concept. Instead of x-axis and y-axis, here the concept is uh, rows and columns. So same model, instead of uh, x-axis and y-axis, here the rows and columns are used. And I go ahead and choose it as a date. And I can see that the tableau view of like the year wise invoice. Similarly, I can make it as a month wise invoice and so on. Uh, I can make it even more comparison between two different uh, years. So I can go ahead and choose the, the years. And then I use the same invoice date and I keep it as month level. And I generate a report that gives me uh, in every month, how many invoices that we have closed in 19, uh, I mean, 2019, 2020, 2021, help me to compare between two different things easily, right? So it's quite extensive, but it's self-service. All you need to do is just, just try to use these drop downs and choose the different combinations to build the report. That's how you need to build it. So after building the report, then you're coming to a layer, which is called dashboard where you have all the reports in one place. So all I need to do is just click on new, uh, create a new dashboard. After creating all the reports, I have the dashboards. And here the, uh, in the dashboards, I just need to drag and drop and put the, put the reports in the way that I prefer to arrange and see it. So for example, this may come with no data. I'm sorry, let me remove that quickly. It may be some other report, which I prefer to see it here. So I can arrange it as the way I prefer to see it and put it together in one form of one dashboard like this. I can add some KPI indicators that shows me the core performance or a specific metric that I prefer to see uh, in any given business. For example, let's say I just wanna stick with uh, the total amount that we have, let's say the total BCY, for example, the total BCY from bills. I just want to compare it with uh, uh, last quarter and this quarter, and I click on apply, I have a new widget that helped me to compare between two different quarters. So it's this layer is pretty simple. Once you fix that data preparation layer on top of it, it's more self-service where you just need to click certain things and create the report on your own. But I'm just coming back to a specific topic here. 
not just creating these reports on your own, but also you can make some, utilize some of the augmented features or I could say the, the AI driven features in terms of uh, predicting something. For example, here, I just want to see the cash flow report. So the cash flow report, which is nothing but, I have it from my, uh, the accrual transactions for a specific kind of uh, accounts or maybe the type of accounts and so on. I know you all know that better, but you just need to create the cash flow as the formula and bring it here in terms of monthly transactions like this. And you can see that the cash flow. Now, I just want to emphasize here, we, you can see that we have the forecasting also, right? Now, this forecasting is a feature in most of the uh, tools, but in analytics, what we do is we, we do some automatic forecasting based on certain algorithms that you typically use. So it's not very complex to use this forecasting with coding and so on. All you need to do is just click on analysis at the top, click on forecast and enable the forecast. That's it. So all you need to do is just click on add forecast, forecast, and that's it. Whenever you have a monthly trend, you can also in, involve the forecasting in Zoha Analytics. What you're seeing here, the, the cash flow forecasting is what you're seeing here. All right. So it can be anything. It can be the invoice amount monthly forecasting for next three months. Or uh, if the due date open invoices are continued to be accumulated every month in next six months, how many open invoices that you may have in your business. So you can, you can predict those things using the forecast feature and it's not any complex operation like writing codes or something. All you need to do is click on analysis and with a couple of clicks, you can enable the forecasting feature, okay? All right, so this is how you report and this is how you create a dashboard and I have explained the interaction options as well. That's how you need to analyze the data. You click on data point, you view the underlying data, you click on dynamic drill down and see a lot of underlying insight in various dimensions to make a decision in the business. That's how the visualization layer works. Now, we are making this whole process more simple, okay? Instead of building the report with complex drag and drop interface, even we make it simple with the ASIA, okay? So, so the ASIA is nothing but, it's a AI assistant that we offer, where we offer a feature called search-driven analytics. You just type what you want and the report will be built automatically, all right? So this is uh, this is the AI-driven technology that we used. And all you need to do is like show me the invoice value probably, okay, uh, by months. So it, it tried to map the column. So you could see that it tried to map the underlying columns behind it and it will try to map the other date column behind it. So, so your, your, the simple query that you ask in your natural language is being converted into a report behind the scenes. It is it, 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 to be database, uh, process the very complex query and get the result on top of it. Uh, for some reasons, the demo setup, it's taking some time, but because it, we have a lot of data in the demo set, probably let me, during the screen sharing, this might be slowing down the tool. So I'm going to simply use this sample data set. We have very less data here. So show me the sales versus cost by months. So just type what you want and the report can be generated. Sounds like some problem. Uh, all right, so but that happens. Let me try to refresh the tool here. So you, you just need to use these latest AI technologies in these, uh, in these analytics tool to get, sounds like some issue here in the demo setup I have, sorry for that, but, but this is how the latest trend or the technology will move forward from here, all right? So this is how you build the visualization. So after creating all the visualizations, I just want to quickly touch base the collaboration part, uh, probably five minutes from here, that's super easy to do it. Uh, so after creating all the reports, dashboards, visualizations, everything in place, like this, then all you need to do is just need to go ahead and use the, the collaboration feature. So when I say collaboration feature, you, I mean, as, as, a, as a CA or maybe as an administrator from uh, administrative perspective, you build all the visualization for your client. Now, all you need to do is just go ahead and share this visualization to somebody. 
uh, either you can provide access to a particular uh, uh, set of data and so on. So for example, here, I just, I just need to type in uh, to whom I just need to share this data set. So I just, I'm just choosing it as John. I go to the permissions where I have the control of like export, whether I want to allow them to export the data, view underlying data, drill down and everything. Even I have something called filter criteria. So filter criteria is, for example, let's, let's assume that we have a multiple organizations like one organization in Mumbai, one in Bangalore, one in Chennai. Now, all you need to do is you just need to provide access only to the Chennai data set for a particular regional owner or somebody, you can define it. Or maybe you may have multiple clients with resides on the same data model or same data set. But while you're sharing that report with that particular client, you want to filter that data set and provide access, which you can do it in Zoha Analytics. So the actual reports has all the data, but when you're sharing it with a particular client, it's that particular client data set, all right? So those flexibilities would be available, but it's pretty easy that you can do it, uh, but just by using Navig uh, Navigate around the features and few clicks, you'll be able to achieve that. Not just that, you can also export the report in any given format. So for example, you can click here, you can choose the PDF and you can export it. Or if you open a specific report, uh, then you can go ahead and export it in form of like CSV, TSV, uh, PDF and so on. And also you have the option to email the report. So right away from Zoha Analytics, you can configure the email schedulers which will deliver to the end user. So every time go ahead and generate and share that report. Uh, you can uh, export an email to it or schedule that email, which will automatically deliver the, the report to your client and customers or your business. I mean, your clients for the business owners can receive the report on every Monday morning or something like that. So that's how it works. So that's the email schedulers. And also you have go ahead and these reports where you can adjust the permalink URL and have this URL shared with your clients where the clients can access that specific URL and access the interactive reports. All right. So that's that's publishing. Even, even a step ahead, we also provide iframes, which let's assume that our clients are using some custom application. So when all these app, uh, reports, everything will be updated automatically. Now you can take this report and have it embedded in your client application. So your client will need to come that in context right inside their application, whatever they use, they will be able to see this reports as an embedded content. And then one time that you put to build this, everything will be updated automatically. All right. So that's the publishing feature, emailing, exporting, and so on. And also there is something called commenting where you can ask like social media, you can collaborate with other users, where you can type the user uh, and start commenting about like, what is the revenue and so on. So basically you can, interact with the other users just within the same portal where they can have the common uh, discussions in place. So this is how you collaborate um, Zoha Analytics. And also the other one is you can also configure some alerts which will deliver to you based on some conditions. So for example, let's say I have the, uh, the cash flow on a certain aspect, let's say your cash flow reaches a particular point, you want to get a notification in a mobile or email, you can configure alerts on top of it and that automatically deliver or notify you when certain conditions met, all right? And it can be in any given uh, channels or applications. So these are all the collaboration options, but just want to emphasize this, you're connecting the data source, preparing the data, building the visualization and collaborating with the user. So the concept is common for all the analytics tools, but the capabilities like using the AI and make the whole process simple is what uh, some specialized tools like Zoho Analytics does in the market, all right? But so that's the core concept, but trying to touch base the topics or the use cases, what I have mentioned, uh, it's, I mean, you can build all these, like let's say customer-wise profit report, or let's say the agent day invoice or multi-org consolidation, everything can be done if you understand all these concepts, basic concepts clearly. So I'm trying to touch base those basic concepts very detailed rather than just showing an output. But I can show that output, what I have mentioned in this agenda also, which is nothing but like, let's say, uh, some of the reports like multi or consolidation. This is one of the much needed report uh, nowadays. You have multiple organization, you want to consolidate together and see the profit and loss or balance sheet, which, which you can do it here. So for example, I'll, I'll quickly show you a consolidated uh, data set here. So, I have one other demo setup. So here we have a balance sheet 
where multiple organizations are consolidated. So we have an uh, organization name called Zilker Pre-Sales, Zilker Sales, and Zilker Service. So you have the you have information data consolidated together in one place so this is a multi or consolidation which you can do it all right and also similarly you can go ahead and do the consolidated pnl statement so we have the pnl statement for multiple organizations in one place so how you do that connect bookkeeping application like zoho books first and then in the same workspace you just need to go ahead and connect the next organization in the same workspace uh, need to use certain data prepared prepare technique like some, some uh, union all queries and so on to consolidate. But also we are trying to address this in the user interface itself. User interface itself, you can do this consolidation altogether. So that's one use case. And quickly, the other one is cash flow statement with forecasting is what we have seen. Customer wise profit, once again, this is more into like inventory management along with bookkeeping. So you have the sales and everything happen. Similarly, you know the unit cost of the cost, whatever the cost of goods sold and all this stuff. You compare those two uh, fields and create the profit using the formulas. Agent day analysis is something that what we have seen. Uh, budget versus actuals is something that uh, I don't demonstrate it, but it's a use case where you bring in the budget, you have the actual transactions, you need to join the tables using lookup, and then on top of it, you can build the report as the way you want. It can be a, a chart or it can be a, um, a pivot view or whatever that you want to create. Overdue invoices, once again, uh, we have discussed on this. Geomap analysis, analysis is it's available based on the uh, certain conditions like location-based. Whenever you capture a location-based data, then you will have that geo-based analysis. So for example, here, let me quickly show you that. Let's assume that uh, we want to see a report that shows the number of customers that we have in different location. If you capture the billing uh, data or a billing based data or something, you can go ahead and add those uh, geo based analysis as a part of it. I'll quickly show you a report here. I don't have it handy. Quickly, let me switch to a different workspace. And uh, just give me a minute. All right, so here we let's assume that we have a dashboard like this. Um, this is one sample where I have data from all different data sources together in one place, basically. All right, and here I have certain reports called geo-based analysis, like sales by region. All right, so sales by region, like uh, a map chart will help you to show the sales by region or invoice amount by region, or a map chart will help you to understand uh, the number of customers that you have or the shipping locations, uh, the shipping hours in every given location. So this is a US sample data set. But similarly, this can be done on the Indian India data set or any place as a matter of fact. So that's the geo-based analysis that you can do. Uh, you need to understand, you need the data to create this report. You need the location information. If you have it, it's pretty simple. You drag and drop those fields and the report can be created automatically, all right? So, and then the inventory management, uh, I'm not stepping in more into this as we touch base the basic concept here, but you can use the forecasting feature and predict what is the, what could be the number of orders that you may receive and how many stocks that you're supposed to have and insights across all the finance apps. So that's the example I have shown here in the Zoho finance uh, demo setup I have shown, we have data from almost all the Zoho finance application together, right? Uh, so you have all the dashboards right from expense management dashboard, invoice dashboard, inventory management dashboard, all together in one place, which you can do it. And, and in Zoho analytics, it's more contextual. This is how we offer. All right. So this is how Zoho analytics works as a product altogether. And uh, from just a quick takeaway points, I just want to let you know that everything is a cloud-based product. You're not installing anything and accessing everything from browser. Please try to adopt to the cloud. That's where the digital uh, concepts will be driven. That's how the government and everybody is driven towards it. So digital-based uh, activities. So adapt to the cloud will make a lot of things more simpler, a lot of maintenance and other stuff can be avoided. Digitalize and automate the processes. So even in the analytics, everything, one-time report creation and all the reports and dashboards will be updated automatically. And um, try to have a global presence. Using these tools, do not stick why you are supposed to stick only with you can have global presence. You can have presence in Middle East. You can have presence in 
US, UK, wherever you want, all you need to do is use these tools to help you to do this uh, job. I mean, it will literally make your job easy and you can uh, do things more smarter than what it is. And advanced analytics, I'm pretty sure this is a key differentiator because not just the traditional finance reports like balance sheet and profit and loss works, you need to have a lot of reports for non-financial metrics also. And that's what your customer may uh, need it uh, to improve their business. And of course you can, I mean, I think the last point is not contextual to this. It's, it's slightly old slide. I just took that particular point. So you can ignore that. So this is how it works. So Zoho Analytics, just want to let you know one specific point. Zoho Analytics is available as a separate product in the market, which, which can be used with any, any bookkeeping application or any data set as a matter of fact. But when it comes to a Zoho Books ecosystem, the, there is a, a plan and other stuff called Ultimate Plan where we have the analytics inventory all together in one place. Uh, so it's a one ecosystem where you have that bundling of handling the bookkeeping in cloud along with the analytics inventory and all together. So this is how we are positioning and delivering it as a solution. And that's our go-to-market strategy. So with that, I'm happy to take up the Q&A session. I know I didn't left a lot of time for q and I'm happy to extend and stay some time to address your questions. And no problem. I don't have a problem with that. But I hope this session is helpful for you to understand the basics and what are all the things that you need to look at uh, when it comes to analytics? So that's it from my end. Happy to take it up the questions one by one. Okay, question from Punit. That is yeah, I've already, already asked, asked it on the chat. Yeah. Yes, Punit. Yeah. So can Zoho uh, help in comparing? Or Reconciliation between two GST. Yes, that's what I said, multi or consolidation. So connect uh, one specific data set. Similarly, you can connect uh, another bookkeeping tools, consolidate together, and, and you can compare it. That's what I was showing as a, a balance sheet between two organizations. It, it, it's possible. It's absolutely possible. All right. So any other questions? Maybe you can post it in chat or you can ask it. I'm happy to answer it. Hello. Yes. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Kinjal Shah. Uh, yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, can Zoho Books help in accounting of capital market transactions? There are a lot of people who do f and o and securities market transaction mm -hmm. where their contract notes and all those uh, documents are available from their stockbrokers in electronic format. So okay. can we straight away import this and do the accounting and taxation aspect? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Klinzel. Uh, I mean, I'm from analytics area and specific, so I'm not very sure on it, but I, one thing I, I can do, I'll, I'm definitely, I can get back to you with this question because internally Zoho Books is a different team. So I'm from analytics team in specific. So definitely I will help you to uh, answer that question. Uh, I, can, I can just share my contact details here. So you would have noticed that. Let me keep it here in the screen open. So you can drop an email or something. I can, I can help you to get that uh, answer for sure. Right. Say this, uh, uh, in, in, uh, when we take the data from an application uh, of tally that is a sales register, mm -hmm. okay, and in that uh, uh, the inventory line and all those things are not very uh, coming in a structured uh, format, uh, if mm -hmm. they are coming in a columnar format. Mm -hmm. So, uh, does it uh, uh, tool? Does this tool help in uh, cleaning and uh, realigning of the data also? So, uh, I'm talking specifically from Tally's sales register columnar uh, perspective. Okay, uh, maybe I'm not sure on that specific module, but definitely I understand the problem uh, in a very high level. Uh, as I, as I mentioned, Zoho Analytics will help you to transform the data for better visualization and analytics, or even for the other purpose, you can take back the data using export feature. Uh, so yes, it is possible to do that. Uh, but once again, we need to look into the detail of what exactly the alignment or what exactly the problem is, and we can cleanse the data for obvious reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, any questions, other questions? Probably there are two different points. Either I'm, I'm super clear that make you to understand it easy or my total concept is completely Greek and Latin. 
So happy to take it up the questions if you have any. No, the uh, concepts that you explained was uh, really uh, in a very uh, smooth manner and it was uh, fantastic. So I would like uh, participants to give uh, their comments or in case they have any questions. Yes, thank you so much, Munit. That's, that's uh, a great feedback. Thank you so much. I, yes, of course. I mean, it, it doesn't need to be like, I know it's a long session, Saturday, uh, and close to the lunch. I know how it is. I, I've been a speaker for many places across uh, many events. So uh, if you have any questions and you, you think it may come up later, please uh, ask the question. You can drop a mail to Silas at, I mean, silas.s at zohocorp dot com and uh, we are happy to answer the question uh, i can help you to get uh, your question answered uh, so silas uh, if you want to take it forward uh, that there are a few uh, details which has come in the chat also so what are the connects and what are the price points at which uh, uh, this could be uh, a brief on the commercials i know uh, this is a pure knowledge session but yeah. still uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, awareness to the customers uh, that what are the uh, details uh, how they can work with this because you come from a background of uh, partner network as well yeah exactly so there are different options maybe uh, since you're interested in it i'm answering that question uh, partnership of course we have uh, i mean we we take the consulting partners we take the referral partners and affiliate partner program and all those stuff so uh, i mean as you're delivering a lot of solution to your clients and customers you can be a partner with Zoho where you will get a lot of, uh, I mean, like you will get certain benefits out of it. We have a detailed partner program in place. Uh, so when you refer or when you implement this products to the customers, you will get some benefits out of it. So which, are, which, which we can explain in detail in the partner program separately. Uh, you can contact us for more details on it. And apart from that, the of the product is, I could say it's super simple. If you see this, this is the Zoho analytics pricing, but if you take the Zoho books, uh, product ultimate edition analytics is uh, free as a part of it so similarly a lot of benefits out there so all you need to do is uh, you can go to zoho.com and uh, if you click on the specific product like analytics or bookkeeping product whatever you'll be able to find the pricing at the top you can click on it and find things on your own so this is how it works but uh, uh, yeah it's, it, we don't hide the pricing it's it's listed and published Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do see some contact numbers and email address. So definitely I will drop in a, a feedback email. And if you have any questions to you, you can also contact me uh, in this email. All right. So maybe one last time, let me ask again. Any questions? Yeah. So I think there are no more questions. Uh, Namrata, can we proceed further on this? Namrata, can you hear us? I think uh, uh, she's not there in front of the machine. Fine. Uh, yeah. On uh, I'm also. Uh, uh, Technology Committee uh, core group member. Okay. So okay. I would uh, like to take it forward uh, from here. Uh, Celis, I've been uh, uh, right from the start of the session, I've been attending and it's quite interesting the way in which you explained how Zoho Analytics work. So initially I had a thought that Zoho Analytics is a part of Zoho Books only. So we will be discussing more on the books part, but uh, you showed it how uh, uh, this particular is a st standalone product and this is a useful product. Yes, uh, the users have a choice of Power BI, users have a choice of a lot of free BI tools which are available uh, on the cloud. But uh, this Zoho Analytics comes uh, with its own sets of advantages. And uh, I saw that uh, while uh, you are, how you are consolidating two, two different books, two different set, data sets, comparing it, and the other parts uh, that you showed the aging analysis. That was really, really uh, uh, worthwhile because a lot of uh, our customers and otherwise are using uh, basic bookkeeping and the accounting part. 
they are not going into the analytics part and which is the uh, requirement of the current business environment business needs analysis business needs forecasting to move forward and from professional perspective also i do believe and it's my firm belief that we should move from uh, the, to uh, move towards the next level of our professional uh, work uh, yes auditing does fetches of us our revenue but uh, more than that uh, we should go into providing the value addition in terms of how they can increase the business uh, if the businessman grows we too grow exactly. so that's uh, the whole idea and i think zoo analytics uh, can be of uh, different different uh, uh, of, uh, useful for this uh, want to know is there a full time session available uh, in terms of because we saw that a lot of fields uh, and uh, those uh, certain syntax and uh, those things uh, uh, were there so do you have a full time training uh, module available or how is it uh, before yes we yes we can uh, i mean we do offer it i mean if if you go to the website itself we have something called uh, training uh, there are two different things there are paid and free training as well so even you can try out the free trainings and also if you go to the zoho.com/analytics choose analytics you have the resources where you have a lot of free webinars finance specific webinars is also available uh, you can see that uh, so you can see a lot of webinars out there and also a lot of trainings available uh, both uh, free and also paid trainings available like virtual trainings so it's it's of course you can uh, take it up those and uh, if you have any questions or if you need any help use this help center and uh, post your questions and the team can available at any time to answer your questions wonderful uh, on that note on behalf of bombay chartered accountant society and uh, myself uh, ca puneet mehta would like to offer you a very heart of hearty word of thanks uh, uh, because uh, today you have taken us to the uh, technology perspective and as well as the business growth perspective how we uh, you know prosper further so uh, with those words uh, i offer a round applause uh, uh, i request members Uh, to say uh, the, if they have any uh, positive feedbacks uh, definitely they have positive feedbacks any other comments uh, on that uh, do share and uh, on uh, behalf of bombay charitable trust society i take uh, this pleasure of thanking you and giving us uh, this insight full uh, session so that uh, we can take uh, uh, things forward and thank you very much uh, sir sir And thank you so much we look forward for more such session uh, from uh, zoho uh, maybe on some other products as well as on this analytics part uh, how we can take it but i think next time we can have more uh, focused uh, uh, you know basics and uh, the advanced one together i mean first only the Sorry. basic and then uh, session 2 for the advanced so that would definitely have uh, add a lot of value uh, to our members as well that's great yeah. i mean it's it's pleasure to be here and thanks for the, such a great feedback it's it's uh, means a lot for me so thank you so much for your time and thank you uh, everyone for uh, uh, providing me an opportunity to explain these uh, technologies to you uh, hopefully uh, let's all meet sometime uh, once the world is back to normal all yes. right so thank you so much take care stay safe yeah. thank and, you uh, thank you from zoho and cyrus yeah. thank you So, uh, thank you. Yeah.